and welcome to this module 20 and 21 of the course design practice. We were talking about how to gauge the various sub elements of a C environment uh, given some influential dimensions and their uh, already established level and their projected level uh, in the should be environment C environment. So, in, in context of that we talked about the various sub elements and the various uh, you know uh, factors influencing the different sub elements including organizational uh, aspects, the requirement aspects for the product line, the communica communication aspects between the uh, program stakeholders and then also the development methodology uh, for the product development process. And in context of that I would like to also uh, just recap about <coughs> how the various levels had been earlier set for different organizational elements between A to D uh, into the, the various sub elements like team membership, leadership member contribution, business relationship, training, education, responsibility, management decisions, so on and so forth. Similarly, a similar analysis was done for the, uh, the requirement elements, definition, schedule types, planning methodology and validation uh, and also uh, the communication elements related to working data management, data acquisition, lessons learned from feedback, decision traceability, interpersonal uh, levels of a C environment. And then finally, also the product development methodology elements related to optimization or maintaining of the data libraries or the development process or the reviews or the measurements or verification or analysis architecture, etc. So, there were different levels in all these uh, self assessment matrices, and you have also found out from the last about two, three uh, slides how the different uh, elements uh, map into some of these sub element levels. And based on these, we want to draw out a matrix for the element slash sub element uh, in, in a way that we can estimate what is the current level and what is going to be the expected level. So, let us uh, write about this. So, let us prepare the uh, we call it the C environment assessment matrix. This will give us some uh, you know basis for uh, the allocation of resources in certain zones without really considering a whole lot of improvements to be done which would be more targeted or pinpointed for the overall influencing dimensions to change levels between B and C as was the uh, target given earlier. So, in this particular case let us say we have the following elements of concurrent engineering. And we have different levels here in this environment let us call this A, B, C and D. So, the first uh, you know element that we are concerned with is the organizational aspects and in the organizational aspects you know that there are certain sub elements like for example, team membership is a sub element of the organizational aspect. So, let us look at where we are placed uh, when we go to the organizational aspect we find out that you know the organization has a vast majority of team members who are product oriented and then manager is appointed by the management. So, if we look again into the self assessment matrix we see that for the membership if members have task perspectives it is generally uh, appropriate to group them under category A. Okay, You can see this particular uh, instance here in this case also the members have a task per perspective they are only oriented towards more towards production and uh, or product and so therefore, uh, it is a good idea for the team membership to be having a level A. Okay, So, we just create level A for the team membership uh, just mark this. Similarly, we look at the second sub element for example, the second sub element in this case is team leadership and you know that in this model that we are talking about the uh, leader is appointed by the management and if we go back into the <coughs> self assessment matrix for the organizational elements you see that for team leadership if management appointed team leader is there it is considered to be level A okay, and it is upgradable to level D of course, all the way to D as you can see here, but right now we are at the level A as regards the team leadership. So, we will just put level A here uh, on the team leadership. Uh, the third sub element that we are uh, considering here for the organizational aspect is the team interaction. Again let us look at what is the feature in the organization which can lead us to map into the self assessment matrix. So, for you know as regards the uh, so we find out that in this particular case in the organization 
uh, although the dominant members are from manufacturing, but they do occasionally receive advice from other, uh, you know, design influencing disciplines. And so there is a sort of a multidisciplinary approach in their, uh, you know, behavioral pattern as far as advisement goes. And if I looked at the organizational aspect again and see the team member contributions, there is a case B here which talks about interface tools and multidisciplinary advisors. So, this is where the uh, most appropriate fit would be of the current status of the organization. So, let us now gauge the uh, team interaction to be at level B, okay, based on that. Then we talk about business relationships. So, in this case, we will just again go back and see what is the kind of relationship level that uh, this organization is at and what is found out is that, you know, mostly, uh, you know, there are uh, apart from some uh, themes, you know, or some uh, specific vendors, mostly the relationships with suppliers are based on purchasing. Uh, of course, there are certain vendors we, who are uh, also stakeholders. I will just write this down here. Uh, so, some suppliers have some stakes. Uh, participate in the design exchanges, design and development exchanges, but there are only few, not all of them. So, the business relationship seems to be sort of contractual, where a very less amount of stakeholding is there, mostly uh, the environment is purchase driven or you know you can you can say that it is contract. Uh, based relationship. So, we will gauge this business relationship at level B of the current organization. So, business relationships is at level B. Then we talk about the next organizational sub element which is about training education and uh, in the training education domain if we go back to look at how the organization uh, you know in the current form is in terms of managing training. Uh, so, we find out that the Training is encouraged mostly uh, discipline oriented, very specific, very focused theme based training uh, and it is not really motivational in nature. So, therefore, uh, the training education could be somewhere around level B again which talks about uh, just a little bit of uh, approach multidisciplinary, but again computer based focused training uh, where uh, you know you, you just learn about the activity that you are doing. Okay. So, there is no uh, training education of let us say more motivational cooperative decision making processes or synergistic knowledge based processes. And so, we can say that the level at which the training education of the current level of organization is, is again B. So, we will just mark that B here. Okay. Uh, again, the sub element related to responsibility authority, if we look at uh, very closely here, responsibility authority. Uh, you know that in this particular organization, the performance awards are given to key individuals. Okay. So, there is some kind of recognition which is there and uh, the uh, responsibility level is really based on some kind of a rewarding uh, basis, which again if we go back into the <coughs> self assessment criteria, it hits the category A here, uh, where it talks about member responsibilities and rewards. So, uh, we will just map this into case A, the responsibility authority is at level A of the current organization. Uh, Let us also look at the last element or sub element of the organization which is management decisions and uh, in this particular case, if we go back again into the requirement of the organization, we find out that long term investments are being made uh, to penetrate into the market. Okay. And so, in a way the management decision that would be there is not going to be just uh, sort of a uh, single phase planning or investment or a profit based uh, cost based decision, but again you know sort of a uh, multi phase planning at a lo longer horizon of time uh, investments using sort of value based decision support systems which enables uh, case or the level to be at uh, level c uh, so we are talking about this particular level here we are not talking about just a single phase of investment 
or something which is you know uh, cost driven decision making, but we are talking about almost a multi phase planning uh, and therefore, uh, you know something which has a value based decision support system of a longer time horizon. Uh, so, management decisions uh, at the current level are at level C for this particular organization. So, let us put level C here. Okay. So, this is how you gauge all the organizational aspects. If we looked at the requirement aspects again, so let us look at what are the requirement elements or sub elements which are to be considered. So, the first requirement sub element is definition, definition related to uh, the product line which is in question and uh, we already know that uh, you know in our earlier analysis we have said that the requirements uh, in this case are mostly customer requirements which are documented and uh, customer needs which are recognized through market surveys and competitive benchmarking. So, if we again go back into the requirements, uh, so requirements uh, self assessment matrix, we find out that uh, <coughs> this corresponds to the level A here which talks about itemized requirements definition or requirements database. So, it is very very specific related to need based uh, you know uh, design uh, ideas. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the definition happens to be at level A. So, we will just mark the definition at level A. Similarly, when we talk about the other sub element of requirements which is schedule types. So, we know from our initial analysis of the organization that uh, for the uh, requirements you know uh, the, the product reputation being very critical, the products will not be released unless they are ready for production. And so, in a way, if we look at uh, what is going to be the, the level of uh, schedule types that we are considering, it has to be an event based, schedules are event based uh, or event driven. Uh, so, here uh, this corresponds to a case C. If we look at let us say the, uh, the requirement elements based and self assessment criteria for the schedule types the event based schedules happen to be at level C, where there is event driven program management tools uh, which are being utilized. So, we will mark this or grade this sub element schedule types at level C uh, somewhere here. And then similarly, we have the other sub element for requirement that is planning and methodology that will be the third sub element. And we will try to find out again using the same comparative method where we are placed in terms of the current organization's strategy. And we see here that the uh, products would kind of get released only when they are ready for production. Okay. So, uh, therefore, uh, we, we can think of a particular level of the planning methodology, uh, which is more based on synchronization of uh, concurrent interrelated tasks, interrelated process driven planning tools to be executed unless that happens we are not able to foresee whether uh, a, a product is uh, production ready. Okay. So, therefore, we, we talk about level C as far as uh, the planning methodology is concerned this particular level uh, and map that as level C under the planning methodology sub element uh, which is being uh, documented here. When we talk about again validation product validation. Uh, <coughs> so, we know that the validation here in this particular case <coughs> is against the customer requirements, the product specifications are validated against customer requirements. And so, therefore, uh, you have to have the, uh, the validation at level, uh, level B uh, particularly in this case, because uh, if we look at in, into the self assessment criteria again for the uh, requirement elements, the validation of interrelated constraints are what actually comes out of uh, the customer requirements. And so, therefore, uh, we will put the validation level at B or, or level B. Similarly, when we do the same uh, practice for the third element which is communications, uh, we have very clear cut you know aspect of communication here. For example, the data management accessibility uh, would happen typically on, uh, on, on this particular 
organizational structure that we are uh, talking about uh, at the program level. Okay. So, you can see that the basic design data is stored at the program level in the communications module of this particular concurrent engineering environment. So, uh, if we look at again the, the self assessment criteria for the communication elements, you can see that uh, you know level C really corresponds to uh, a program repository of working data, central program database. Okay. So, this is how at the program level things can be uh, done. So, when we talk about uh, data management and accessibility, uh, it, it happens to be at level C. So, let us write this sub element here data management accessibility. Okay. So, we talk about level C uh, in this particular case. When we talk about data acquisition and sharing that is the second sub element in case of the <coughs> communication module. We, we find out because you know we are talking about a, uh, a concept of product information being shared across uh, product projects and uh, you know you, you have some kind of you know commonality of design and project goal oriented uh, reuse uh, in uh, such information being shared. So, if we looked at the levels the different levels of the uh, section on uh, data acquisition and sharing uh, on the communication sub element self assessment matrix, we see that we are somewhere here when we talk about uh, data available as generated uh, program sharing central database storage on program network. So, we are, we are talking about uh, the level of data acquisition and sharing to be at level C. Let us mark level C here for data acquisition and sharing. Similarly, when we talk about uh, let us say lessons learned for feedback that is the third sub element and this is mostly about experiential feedback. Uh, we know that the team members are focused on product and their project goals. So, a very very kind of skewed way of thinking here and if I looked at again the lessons learned. So, if you have a consolidated <coughs> design guide with rational and checking a little bit of structured query capability or uh, with increasingly integrated rules, you are talking about a level B where uh, such feedback can be generated. So, you have some uh, rationale behind what you are thinking although very minuscule level of rationale which is good enough at this stage because we talk about again uh, team members focused on their project goals. Okay. So, slightly above the product orientation. So, we will say that this is stationed at level B. Again, when we took look at design traceability, uh, we can record this to be at level C. In this particular case, uh, in the organizational aspects, obviously, there is some kind of communication of design and project goal oriented reuse, which is there of the data. And so, when we look at traceability issues, we are talking about a sort of a program decision rationale ownership and a repository with the unstructured keyword search which is available program wide. So, again something which is uh, where the level of the current organization seems to be. Uh, and then of course, in the other sub element factor that is interpersonal, in this particular case uh, people are generally focused to <coughs> the uh, product or project goals and uh, in this case we can say that we have sort of equal inputs across the whole program coming out from different sectors which is corresponding to again case C as one can see here <coughs> where although it is not really a knowledge based perspective which generates 
further knowledge, but you know it is about really uh, the product as such or let us say about the project how it is going. So, that equal input input or impact helps in uh, you know sort of interpersonal uh, knowledge generated uh, across several different uh, sectors of the particular program. So, interpersonal can be mapped at level C. Similarly, we also have a mapping for product development methodology which I am not going to go into details anymore, but I am just going to show you how uh, the different sub elements like optimization, data library, development process, reviews, measurements, analysis architecture, verification etcetera are again uh, classified into the different levels A, B, C and D. So, let us just uh, write this down here, this is uh, element D, uh, in one case we are talking about product development methodology and several sub elements involved in this. Uh, case A is related to optimization. So, we, we know that uh, you know the level of optimization that will be there uh, in this particular case, um, because we are, we are considering all the interrelated customer requirements in the product uh, design. So, we are thinking or we are, we are uh, stationed at <coughs> somewhere around level B. So, with limited interrelated requirements, we carry out optimization. So, let us just grade these into different levels. So, optimization is at level B. Similarly, uh, in this particular case, the data libraries are uh, <coughs> established across the program to provide application independent uh, data to all projects as well as complete product design data packages. So, this corresponds to uh, a level C, which talks about uh, you know independent libraries, technology information, uh, external to tools. So you can think of a level here. Okay, so this is level C, where the data libraries of the program are. So we just create this level C. Uh, similarly, when we talk about uh, development process, the development process here in this case. So Regarding the development process, we are stationed at level C uh, again, uh, sorry level B again, uh, which, which talks about uh, if we look at the product development methodology, we are uh, having a, a sort of a good and proper verification process, design documentation uh, being followed and then also the verification process is very thorough to ensure proper performance of products delivered to the customers. These are the existing levels okay, of the organization at which the organization is in. And uh, uh, we talk about a design methodology which is quite well documented. So, when we look at the, uh, the self-assessment criteria here for the product development methodology, the development process where the central theme is controllability should be. Uh, based around this which talks about measurement standards uh, definition uh, you know so it's a well documented kind of a design process you know the, you have key parameter identification tools which are there through which you could access uh, any particular portion measure it measure the efficacy okay and uh, compare it with definitions so we have therefore the development process at level b similarly when we talk about reviews again if we look at uh, the section on reviews uh, the reviews are typically in this case event driven that is what has happened earlier also when we talked about uh, you know even uh, the part related to the requirements that uh, in, in the requirement section as you uh, as you may have found out earlier that the schedules uh, are sort of program, program event driven. So, obviously, the review should also be event driven as far as the development methodologies go. So, uh, we will have the fourth sub element here uh, reviews categorized under uh, again category B. Similarly, uh, we have measurements, this is another sub element in the product development methodology. So, this is a station that if we look at uh, the measurements, uh, we have sort of a deterministic indices based uh, system. Uh, where you, you can have function specific uh, measurement method. 
Okay, so because it is very methodical, the design process is very methodical and well documented, uh, it is as well uh, pertinent for us to consider that in this particular organization, we have a very good uh, measurement information system uh, which can handle uh, sort of varied project requirements. So, we can have the measurement stationed at level A. Okay. Uh, when we talk about again uh, analysis architecture, the analysis architecture in this case has been found to be at level A again and uh, the verification scheme in the product development methodology happens to be at level B which is about multidisciplinary uh, analysis tools based verification. So, uh, <coughs> it is a very well defined uh, design methodology. So, obviously, these aspects are uh, a part of uh, different sub elements associated with the development methodology here. So, if we in general look at this whole matrix that we have drawn for assessing the current level of the concurrent engineering environment, we find out that uh, the way that you know the uh, different A, B's and C's are classified, a total number of <coughs> 6 A's are recorded in this particular table as far as B goes, there are about 9 B's which are again recorded and as far as C's go, there is no level D. So, C's are 7 uh, actually 8 C's which are recorded. Uh, in, in, in this particular scheme of events. So, as far as the task structuring or the element structuring is concerned, uh, you, you can probably say that again the level of uh, operation here as far as all the elements are concerned is the majority if we have equal weightages to all these different uh, elements related to C and so at present the level of the C environment is set at B and we want to migrate to C. So, <coughs> basically we would like to <coughs> invest into some of these which have direct consequences which will get into level C. So, what we are going to do now or what we are going to sort of uh, uh, think of is that what is the requirement in terms of the influential dimensions which will gauge these levels uh, to translate ahead. You already know that considering the current scenario, uh, the level of difference between the B's and the C's are not very high and so if the overall level of uh, the concurrent engineering environment is at level C, then relatively less effort would be needed to establish by directing some of the resources to some of these elements here for making or upgrading the level from B to C. Okay, so, we all need, all we need is to sort of have a representation, majority representation in this matrix if provided all the elements are equally weighted of more number of C's than B's for the environment to change gears into uh, the next higher level. You already recorded in the earlier uh, you know uh, few slides that for the influential dimensions for the product line to be introduced, the manager must consider setting up the environment to level C of the concrete engineering uh, you know atmosphere or environment from the existing level B. So, this is the sort of a map. Okay, which tells that how much effort would be needed to do that in terms of structuring all the elements. So, uh, I hope that you get a good idea about how uh, on a practical situation, let us say when uh, you know a, in a management environment needs to be set up for implementing uh, concurrent engineering solutions, one needs to look at independently for your own specific case, the various elements that are needed or involved in uh, setting up that environment which would be able to assist or influence the product dimensions. Okay. And then when an, any new production line is introduced or any new product is introduced or any new program is introduced in a overall uh, let us say uh, enterprise like environment, it is important for uh, one to consider the phase one about what are the critical dimensions, what are going to be the current levels, where is where the level is being projected for uh, the sales of the new product line to be higher and then accordingly tweak the uh, the elements in a manner 
by limited resources, by investing limited resources into them so that you could change gears from the current level to a mapped level as necessitated by the phase one uh, influential dimensions of uh, the particular product. So, this is how you uh, plan a concurrent engineering environment. So, we will sort of round off here uh, this particular module, but in the next module we will look at some of the basic tools which are related to uh, by, by designers to work in a concurrent engineering like setup and these tools are uh, relatively uh, handy in terms of structured uh, approaches for carrying out the exact customer's psyche. Uh, if it is uh, let us say related to uh, failure modes related to a product, we have a methodology called FMEA which means failure mode effect analysis. If it is related to uh, training of the voice of the customer, uh, there should be a sort of a methodology where uh, the, the need, the exact need finding uh, a part of the customer should come ahead through a very organized matrix called the quality function deployment matrix QFD. And so, we will talk about these various aspects uh, of concurrent engineering environments which will enable designers to uh, proceed in a particular manner uh, to, to do uh, the best product designs. So, with that I would like to uh, conclude this particular module. Thank you very much and I will see you in the uh, next week's module. Thank you.